Welcome or welcome back to Twisted Minds. My name's James, and today we're going to be talking about Alexandra Rubel, also known as the Handicap Killer. Alexandra was a very intriguing man, to put it lightly. He was committed to a series of murders between 1997 and 1998. What's strange about Alexander's case is that, unlike most vicious criminals, he didn't take credit for his crimes. Instead, he blamed them on gasoline vapors. More on that shortly. To make things even more bizarre for Alexander, he didn't spend a lot of time in prison. He was only sentenced to a handful of years, and despite having murdered over five people, he is a free man to this day. After spending just a few years behind bars, Alexander was released, and now he lives a normal life. He is married and now has a family and children. How is it that one of the world's most vicious serial killers is now roaming the streets as a free man and can live a perfectly normal life? Well, let's find out. Born in the Ukraine on Christmas Day 1980, Alexander Rubel seemed to be your standard kid. However, even though Christmas holiday is typically filled with love and cheer, the opposite could be said for Alexander, who seems to have been battling his mental sanity for a very long time. Despite having lived in Ukraine, he frequently stayed in Estonia, often visiting beaches and various other attractions. The childhood of Alexander Rubel isn't very well known. He doesn't seem to have been abused or neglected the same way that many serial killers are. However, he doesn't seem to have had the best childhood either. We know that Alexander likely had some demons throughout his younger days because at the age of 13, he began to huff gasoline fumes to get high. I'm sure most of us already know that, for the most part, people don't begin abusing drugs if they have a great life. While it's certainly possible for someone with a perfect family and perfect life to fall victim to the clutches of addiction, it's uncommon and there's often a lot of underlying trauma that has been suppressed for many years. For this reason alone, it seems safe to assume that Alexander had likely been struggling in some way for quite a long time. 13-year-old Alexander would huff gasoline fumes to disassociate himself from the outside world. We don't know why he chose gasoline, but it's likely because it's somewhat cheap and readily available. For anyone who may not already know this, gasoline fumes are remarkably toxic. It doesn't take much to cause you to fall unconscious, and if left exposed for too long, you could lose your life as a result of breathing gasoline fumes. However, for Alexander, he would expose himself to the fumes in just small bursts, like just enough to get high so that he could continue functioning as a normal person while hiding his addiction from his friends and family. However, like most drugs and addictions, the gasoline vapors awaken something in Alexander that he could have never imagined. These vapors allegedly turned a completely harmless boy into a brutal and savage serial killer. At least, that was Alexander's defense when he was eventually arrested. Many serial killers begin to claim lives when they are very young. It's not uncommon to hear about young killers who take the lives of small animals, such as cats or dogs. Some psychiatrists and researchers believe that these crimes are trials for later in life when they plan on claiming much larger victims, often humans. We don't know for sure if Alexander began his spree with animals or smaller victims, and it seems like his first major crime took place in 1997, when he would have been about 17 years old. Alexander lived near an older gentleman named Tanyu Pold. There hasn't been much information released about Tanyu, but we know that he was an elderly man who struggled with some physical disabilities that made life a little bit more difficult for him. The news media at the time referred to Tanyu as handicapped, but it seemed as though he managed to get through his daily life with only minor difficulties. By all means, he was a happy and somewhat healthy man who was just doing his best to get by, despite a few medical setbacks along the way. On September 19, 1997, Alexander huffed gasoline the same way he had done dozens of times in the past. Now, truth be told, I don't understand how Alexander could have had even enough brain cells left at this time to be able to feed himself, let alone commit a crime that he was about to commit. Now, don't get me wrong, 
I'm not bashing Alexander or demeaning him. I'm just saying gasoline vapors are incredibly powerful and can cause lifelong brain damage very easily. However, Alexander was somehow able to hold himself together despite his incredibly dangerous addiction. It was on this day that Alexander's drug use changed something inside of him. He says that this time the high was much different than it had been before. Rather than feeling as though he was floating or feeling like the struggles of life no longer mattered, an anger had begun to brew. Alexander told investigators that he had a lust for blood that could only be satisfied by taking someone's life. We don't know specifically what happened during this time to cause Alexander to snap, but he decided to take his rage out on the nearest and most easy target, his handicapped neighbor, Tanyu Pold. Tanyu had been spending his day home alone. Whether his home was unlocked or if Alexander broke in, Alexander approached Tanyu in his house and claimed his life in a savage manner. The articles about this case are unclear about how long Tanyu remained in his home before being discovered, but Alexander was long gone by this point, and police had no reason to suspect that an otherwise normal, sane, 17-year-old boy would commit such a violent crime. For the moment, Alexander got away with the crime and continued living his life as he normally would. When he spoke with investigators later on, Alexander told them that he chose to take Tanyu's life because he was an easy target. It doesn't seem like he had ever done anything like this before, so he wanted to attack someone who wouldn't put up much of a fight. It seems like simply fighting someone wasn't enough, and Alexander wanted to make sure that he successfully claimed the life of whoever he decided to attack. This wouldn't be the only time that gasoline vapors would lead to Alexander's bloodlust. Alexander's second crime is where things begin to take a turn, and we begin to see what may have been brewing inside of him since a very young age. Throughout all of the articles that have been written about Alexander over the years, we never hear much about his father. We don't know what he did for a living, how old he was, or what his relationship with his son was. However, his father, Andre Rubel, seems to have had some serious anger issues of his own. It's possible that these emotions were witnessed and inherited by Alexander at a very young age. On November 7, 1997, Alexander's life would be changed forever. His father returned home and had reason to believe that his wife, Alexander's mother, had been having an affair. A guest was at their home that day, Alexei Pavlov. Andre was so enraged that he grabbed a knife and stabbed Pavlov at least four times, presumably ending his life. It seems like Alexander likely witnessed this crime because reports claim that he helped Pavlov into one of the nearby bedrooms after he sustained such serious injuries. However, Alexander's intentions were much darker than they may seem. From the sound of it, it seemed as though Alexander helped the man into the nearby bedroom under the disguise of helping him patch himself off and phone the police. However, the exact opposite happened. In a fit of rage, Alexander began to strangle the man who was now fighting for his life in more ways than one. While he was down, Alexander grabbed him and tossed him from a third story window, ending his life as soon as he hit the ground. Police eventually showed up and arrested Andre, taking him straight to jail. For some reason, Alexander was not held accountable for his portion of the crime. It's possible his father took full blame for the attack, even though he only committed the first half of the crime. Regardless of what took place, Alexander was allowed to walk away as a free man and his father was sentenced to seven years in prison for taking the life of Pavlov. I think we can all safely assume at this point that Alexander's life would never be the same again. His family was now completely torn apart, his mental health was obviously in the gutter, and his mother was most likely cut out of his life as well, as she'd been allegedly having an affair with another man. Alexander laid low for a little while after his father was arrested, and he eventually made a trip to Strumi Beach. The beach is a popular tourist attraction that brings in visitors from all across Russia and surrounding areas. The weather is often quite neutral, and the ocean waves provide a great place to relax and cool off during the warmer months. 
However, when Alexander traveled to the beach that day, he had many different plans in mind. The dates of the attack are not clearly stated, but sometime between January 22nd and January 24th of 1998, Alexander traveled to the beach and once again had begun huffing gasoline. It was here he met a person named Javanji Shalest. Javanji had been spending the day at the beach, hoping to unwind and release a bit of stress. However, Alexander ended the man's stress once and for all, completely against his will. Alexander took out his rage on the middle-aged man and claimed his life after stabbing him multiple times. We don't know if the crime was witnessed by passerbys or if Alexander did this in a secluded area, but somehow police were still not on the tracks of Alexander and once again, he was able to get away with this crime without facing any sort of punishment. Stromy Beach, which had once been a place of peace and tranquility, was now surrounded by police officers and yellow tape and a full-fledged murder investigation was taking place. It would only be a few days later on February 2nd that Alexander would strike again. We don't know the exact location of this crime, but Alexander found his next victim much more quickly than the previous ones. As you likely already assumed, Alexander had been huffing gasoline once again. This time, he was hiding in a nearby city when he noticed a middle-aged man walking toward him. Rather than greeting him with a courteous hello or simply just leaving the man alone, Alexander approached him and asked the man if he could spare a cigarette. Afterward, he asked the man if he could give him $5 to buy a small amount of gasoline. It's unknown if the man gave him the cigarette and money or if he turned him down. However, either way, Alexander turned on the man and grabbed an ax. Who knows where this ax came from? It's possible that Alexander had been carrying it around with him the whole time, but whatever took place that day, Alexander attacked the man with an ax and completely removed his head, leaving him in the street to be found by officers later on. At this point, it seems clear that officers were dealing with a full-fledged serial killer who didn't seem to have a preference for his victims. By all means, he simply attacked whoever he felt like and left them where they were for officers to find later on. The innocent man's name was Vladimir Ivanov and for reasons unknown, Alexander fractured yet another family without ever being provoked. Alexander's next crime would take place less than one week later. This time he would strike much closer to home and he would claim the life of his very first female victim. A middle-aged woman named Olga Voronkova lived in the same neighborhood as Alexander and the two had likely seen each other a time or two in the past. Some articles seem to provide conflicting information about this victim, with some saying he lived in the same building as Olga, and others saying she simply lived nearby. Whatever the case may be, Alexander claimed the woman's life without a second thought. This crime doesn't seem to have been as vicious as his previous attempts, but we don't know for sure what method he used to claim her life, though I don't think it really matters too much. At the end of the day, Alexander took the life of an innocent woman who posed no threat to him, nor did she provoke him in any way. By February 28th, Alexander claimed the life of yet another victim. This time he had entered the home of an older man named Vladimir Kinzersky. It seems like he wasn't paying any mind to Alexander and that Alexander entered his home without permission. He would take his life and leave his body to be discovered by investigators days later. This leads us to Alexander's final victim. The victim did not fit the profile of any of Alexander's previous attacks as she was a young 15 year old girl who posed no threat to Alexander whatsoever. This is where the case takes yet another strange turn and exposes that Alexander wasn't simply suffering from mental illness. Rather, it seems as though that he had anger issues that were left completely unchecked. We don't know exactly how this case played out, but it seems like Alexander had a romantic interest in this young lady. Keep in mind that these two were only two years apart and Alexander was still 17 years old at the time of the crime. We don't know if they had been flirting or if Alexander had simply been doing his best to persuade the girl to have a relationship with him. But we know that Alexander wanted to take things much further and offered for their relationship to become physical. 
The girl immediately rejected Alexander, and he did not take this very well. While visiting a small peninsula in Tallinn called Palgesare, Alexander grabbed the girl and took her life with a knife, and left her body where the two were last seen together. This would be the case that led to Alexander's undoing, and the police immediately knew where to find their killer. They arrested him immediately after the attack against the 15-year-old Alice Sivas. Thankfully, the killer was finally off the streets, but things weren't as simple as they seemed. Police immediately began to interrogate Alexander to learn why he had taken the life of this young lady. After explaining the reasoning behind the crime, he further revealed that he had claimed the lives of 20 additional people. Police were shocked and completely dumbfounded that someone so young could be capable of such horrible crimes. However, Alexander would recant this confession and admitted that he had only taken the lives of about six people. Here is where the story reaches a major hitch. In any other country in the world, you'd likely assume that Alexander would be locked away for life, right? Well, that's not exactly how things played out. You have to keep in mind that all of these crimes were committed when Alexander was between 16 and 17 years old. This means that, according to the law, he was still a minor. This means he would be immune to the laws that had been put in place for adults, and he would only be able to face a maximum punishment of just eight years in prison, even though he had torn the lives of so many families apart. After Alexander spent just under a decade in prison, the officers who had been taking care of him for all of this time told government officials that he had not been rehabilitated. They strongly suggested that the chances of him committing these crimes again were remarkably high, but the courts were unable to do anything about it. After all, police and investigators have had no choice but to uphold the law. This meant that Alexander was released and became a free man in June of 2006 after serving just eight years for claiming the lives of six people. Today, he lives a normal life and managed to get married and start a family. He now has children of his own and, all things considered, no one would suspect a thing if they saw him walking down the street. Even though officers claim he is still a violent man with evil intent, Alexander Rubel is allowed to walk among the free and live a normal life. And, as far as we know, he hasn't broken the law in any drastic way since his release. Thanks for tuning in to Twisted Minds. That was the case of the handicapped killer, Alexander Rubel. Oh, and why don't you go ahead and click on one of the two videos on the screen for another one of our videos.